Today we're discussing food and how it can help you maintain your progress and results. We're jumping in with one of my favorite macros to talk about, protein. We're going to chat about why you need more protein in your diet, especially during intermittent fasting, how much you should be consuming every day, and the best way to incorporate it at every meal, plus how to sneak more protein into your eating window so you stay energized and satiated. This is super important because the majority of us are not consuming enough protein. We've got a lot of great content to cover today, so let's get started. We're going to be covering why you need more protein, especially during intermittent fasting, and how much you should have at each meal and how much you can, should consume each day. Plus, we're discussing how to sneak more protein into your meals during your eating window. So why do we like protein best out of all the macros? The majority of us are consuming a lot less protein than we should be. Protein is important to help us feel more full and satisfied. This is important during intermittent fasting because protein helps make sure that we feel more satiated between meals so we're not grazing the entire time our eating window is open. Protein is also super important for our overall health because it plays a key role in hormone synthesis and formation of enzymes and neurotransmitters in the body. Protein also has a higher thermic effect, meaning that we typically need to use more energy to digest protein and break it down once we've eaten it. So in effect, our bodies are actually working harder and using more energy to digest and break down protein compared to other things like carbohydrates or fats. Protein helps maintain our lean body mass, our muscle mass, while we're in a caloric deficit. This is also important during a fast or even a fat loss phase. So by increasing protein consumption during our eating window, this has a positive impact on our fasting window. So think about it this way. When we're in a weight loss phase, our body is looking for sources of energy. We want it to use the fat for fuel. We want to lose fat, but we want to use the fat for fuel. But we're also prone to losing lean muscle mass because our body is searching for anything that it can just break down and use for fuel. So by eating more protein, as well as doing exercises or resistance training, this will help mitigate the loss of lean muscle mass, and it forces the body to continue using our fat stores for energy. Protein also helps regulate blood sugar levels and causes glucose to enter our bloodstream more slowly if we eat protein with meals that also contain glucose and sugar. Proteins also provide solid energy for our daily activities. Let's talk about amino acids and proteins, the building blocks of life. So amino acids are the tiny molecules that combine to form proteins. So in all, there are 20 amino acids. 12 of them are produced in the body. The other 8 amino acids are known as essential amino acids. This means they're not produced in the body and they have to be supplied through dietary intake. We need all 20 amino acids for protein synthesis. So most protein that comes from animal sources and a lot of the plant-based protein options will provide all those essential amino acids that you need so your body can function at its best. We should be aiming to consume 0.8 to 1 grams of protein per pound of body weight every day. So let's take that basic calculation of 0.8 to 1 grams per pound of body weight and do the math for a 150 pound person. This gives us a range of 120 to 150 grams of protein a day. The best way to break this down is to try to get about 20 to 40 grams of protein in every single meal. So if you're counting calories or counting macros, you want to start by trying to hit the protein goals and hit your calorie goals first, and then let those fat and carbohydrate macros sort of fall where they may. The goal is to bump up your protein intake while staying within your ideal calorie range. Starting your day or opening your eating window with a higher protein meal is a great way to set you up to hit your protein targets. You can easily increase your protein intake during your first meal by including something like a protein shake or adding protein powder to a beverage or by making a few extra eggs or even a side of an egg white scramble. When you're eating your meal, you want to eat the protein source first, especially before you get to any of the starches. Protein increases the production of peptide YY. It's a gut hormone that makes you feel full and satisfied. In addition, a higher protein intake will decrease your levels of the hunger hormone ghrelin, and a higher protein intake increases your metabolic rate after eating. Remember that thermic effect we were talking about? That's that. That will help increase your metabolic rate. So what's more is that eating protein first can help keep your blood sugar and your insulin levels from rising too high after a meal. You want to center your snacks around protein. So if you're prone to snacking during your eating window, just try to prioritize higher protein snacks. Things like fat-free or low-fat Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, a protein shake, even a protein bar, or a roll-up made of deli meat and cheeses. Those are great options. You can consider something like a tuna packet, a beef jerky, or even just a handful of nuts. These are all great high-protein snacks. Plan ahead and prepare your protein ahead of time so it's ready to go. Even if you don't do a full-on weekly meal prep, if you prep your proteins, you can quickly throw a meal together in no time. 
And if you're tracking your intake, you can weigh or measure and pre-portion out your protein, which will save time later. Another great trick is to pick up a pre-cooked chicken or a rotisserie chicken at the grocery store. You can also consider putting some frozen meat or even some chicken nuggets in the freezer. Another trick for upping your protein intake is to choose the high protein option of foods that you like. So if you like Greek yogurt, for example, there are high protein varieties of Greek yogurts in the grocery store. So that's a quick and easy swap you can make to fit in more protein. If you like pasta, you can consider purchasing a higher protein variety of pasta, such as banza. So it fills your pasta need, but it also gives you an additional boost of protein. And there are a few other little tips and tricks like adding extra egg whites to a morning omelet, which will add protein without adding extra fat. You can even do things like swapping protein-dense sides, like choosing quinoa and substituting that in for things like rice or other grains. You can also choose to have a protein shake with your meal as your beverage instead of like a glass of juice or a glass of milk. You can even add a scoop of protein powder to your morning coffee. Another option is to just increase your serving sizes. So increase the serving sizes of proteins that you already like to eat. Whatever protein sources you're already consuming, just have more of it. Just increase the protein size or the amount that you eat. So you want to make sure you're including high quality protein at every meal or with every snack. Aim for at least four ounces of protein two or more times a day. So that's about one to two palm sized servings of protein per meal. If you're using a powdered protein or getting your protein from sources other than animal meats, you want to aim to consume at least 20 to 40 grams of protein, however you get your protein. How to hit your protein target and increase the amount you're eating on a daily basis. You want to ensure that the majority of the foods that you're consuming come from lean proteins. Things like meat, egg whites, low-fat or fat-free dairy options, clean, low-mercury fishes, vegetables, fruits, and even whole grains. It's also a great way to ensure that you're getting extra fiber, if, and a fiber and protein combo will help you stay full and satisfied throughout the day. If you're looking for non-dairy or non-animal sources of protein, there are loads of options. So there's all sorts of different ways to hit your target creatively without boring your taste buds. All right, some great protein add-ins and suggestions. Higher protein bar, adding a little bit of nut butter to something, adding cheeses to maybe salads or breads or crackers, a high-protein Greek yogurt with, with berries and nuts, adding chopped almonds to things, you know, snacking on edamame, which is known to be high in protein, choosing an ancient grain like amaranth, and adding beans to dishes, like even just a quarter cup of beans added to a soup or a burrito or basically to anything can up that protein intake. Strategically adding protein powder to maybe your oatmeal, maybe your morning coffee, consume a high-protein cottage cheese, and you can even choose a high-protein cereal to start off your day. I want you to track your food intake and assess your current protein consumption. I want you to calculate the ideal protein needs and make adjustments to any existing meals to see if you can up your protein intake. I want you to share what helps you consume more protein and your favorite high-protein meals and snacks with us. So hopefully now you understand why I love protein and why it's so important for our overall health. Plus, it's a secret weapon when we're intermittent fasting because it helps us feel full and satisfied so we're not grazing or snacking the entire time our eating window is open. Protein plays a key role in so many body processes and it's important for recovery and healing. I hope this video helps ensure you incorporate more protein into your diet. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you found my content useful. If you do, please hit that like button to help this content spread to more people. If you're hungry for more intermittent fasting content, I've got an amazing video for you to watch right here. Aww.